Ready? Sure. Okay. Well, this is the Scott County Election Board uh, special meeting on October the 22nd. I'm going to call it to order. I do want to preface the meeting by saying what this is about. It's only to go over complaints that have been received. This is not a hearing for anybody at this point in time. It's just to go over what's been received because we don't even know what has been received other than what we just got. Also, I expect everyone to be respectful, kind, no arguing, no yelling. This is just to go over the complaints and also there will be open discussion at the end. So I just wanna make sure everyone's clear on that, okay? And also, we don't care what side of the table you sit on. I don't care which which party you are. This is not about party who's against what. We are here to follow these IC codes and that's what we do. So if there's any problems with that, then you need to take it up with the state. Okay, first item on this meeting is signing of minutes from our 10-7 meeting. Okay, so we do not have those done because we have just been slain, so I need to make a motion to amend the agenda because they are not done yet. Okay. We were hoping, but we've been so busy we haven't had a chance to get those done yet, so I just need to uh, make a motion to agenda that. Uh, Do you want a second that? I'll we'll second it. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Commended. And we'll get those done as soon as we can. It's just been crazy. Okay. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. The formal election complaint from voters discussion, and I'm going to let Michelle lead that because she is the one that has received the complaint. Okay. So we have had um, four written formal complaints. Um, the first one came from the um, James War as a voter and as the um, GOP chair um, about the uh, Democrat Party sending out um, absentee ballots. And I will just read what was sent to um, us as the election board. Um, dear Clerk and election. To the applications, not ballots. Or, I'm sorry, okay. applications. Sorry, applications. Uh, the, the, the complaint was for the application for ballots. Um, I'm just going to read his complaint. Um, Dear Clerk and Election Board, I am writing as both a voter and an elected official of the county. I have some serious concerns for the safety of our election in Scott County due to a recent mail that was sent and delivered to our citizens by the local Democrat Party. I have reviewed Indiana Law 311-42. I have noticed several discrepancies with their correspondence. First, the law clearly states name of person sending the absentee ballot application has, has sent you the enclosed application. Um, this is unsolicited and is not sent by the state or local election office. However, I do not see this anywhere. Further, it is quite concerning to me that the correspondence requested the absentee ballot request is returned and in, in the stamped envelope to the Democrat headquarters and not to the, clerk, to the county clerk, which would further secure our election process. Finally, I have highlighted areas of the ballot. Finally, they have highlighted areas of the ballot requested to fill out which in to fill out, which in my opinion is viewed as leading people to request such that may otherwise not want to and feeling this is what is required. I fully believe there is a need and justification for absentee voting, but this is a huge problem in our county when a particular party decides to violate Indiana laws and, viol and violate the security of our election processes by committing illegal acts and poorly guiding citizens to vote in ways they have highlighted. I sincerely hope you will take this serious as I have and move promptly to get this stopped. Thank you, J.R. Wood. So that is the first one. Do you want me to read them all or do you want me to just to, do you want to go one by one? Well, they're, are they all the same thing? Um, Frankly, unless you can just take notice of the complaints and as long as everybody has a copy, I uh, think that there's been a public records request already for those complaints and those have been made available. I don't think you have to read the specifics of every single complaint. You just want to address the issues that are raised. 
Okay, so then so then we have one that is from Lisa Bateman that is about that certain situation too. Um, and then we have one from Lori Crossdale that is about that specific situation too. The same situation, but it's original. Correct. Yes, from Mr. Ward. Yes, those are all three complaints about um, the absentee applications that were sent out by the Democrat Party. Um, I have had multiple. Um, no formal complaints from these other individuals, but I've had multiple individuals bring in um, what they received from the party, the Democrat Party, um, and were highly concerned because they, as a citizen, did not request this. Um, and so I have those, and they have brought in their envelopes of those. Um, but they are not formal complaints. They were just citizens bringing in uh, the envelopes and the documentation um, with concerns um, of this process. Okay. Do you want to go? Do you want me to list those names? That's this. Thing? No. Okay. No. This is just individuals <coughs> that did not write formal complaints. They just brought in their envelopes that they were highly concerned at the process being done. Um, and so I took the envelopes because they didn't want them in their possessions, um, and they just said that they wanted their voices opinion or voices heard that they were highly concerned. But it is not a written form. Take notice of the individuals that sent those, um, and that it's the same issue, basically. Yes, it's all it's all within that same issue. Okay. Do I need to read those people's names? No. Okay. I mean, if yeah, somebody wants copies of them, they can be made available. But. Okay. Good. And so that is, those are, that is the three written formal complaints. And then, as I stated, we have the multiple citizens that have came in with their envelopes um, saying that they did not request them. Does this need to be addressed? Um, we, yes, I mean, we, we can get to, I will we'll get to all of this. Um, of that. So during the process of all of this, um, I have been reaching out to the attorney um, and to the Indiana Election Board Division um, and to the Secretary of State on multiple issues that we've had within the processing of this um, Processing all of these applications. Yes. Yeah. No, you have to. Yeah, you have I'm to. having a hard time hearing. Um, I'll try to talk louder. Within the in the process of, of getting all of these, um, the staff and I have noticed there are some discrepancies um, within the applications that we have been receiving, um, and so I reached out to um, Indiana Election Division on guidance for this, um, and that is going to be the list that I gave you guys of the ADS applications that we have received and the voter registrations that we have received. Um, that we have had several turned in from multiple candidates and um, that there is no date of receipt, which is chain of custody. Um, we have over we have 250 either voter registrations or ABS applications received from candidates that did not have chain of custody dates. Um, this is not a new law. This is not a new step in the ABS application process. Um, I went back um, several years um, because when we received them, just to kind of give you a little bit of uh, steps and procedures, checks and balances that the clerk does, um, if somebody is in possession of someone else's absentee application, they have to fill out an affidavit saying, you know, they are turning this in, and they have to fill it out um, that they received these applications. Um, 
when I took office, um, we started having um, the staff that takes them um, put on uh, how many were ABS applications. Um, if it was a voter registration, we date stamp in so that all of those go inside are coincided. It's just like checks and balances and making sure. Um, so within that process, um, we have had um, 250 ABS applications or voter registrations that did not have date received, which breaks the chain of custody. Um, the law is that they, when the candidate or the person receives it, whether it's somebody assisting a candidate or anybody, they have 10 days from the date that they received it to turn it into the clerk's office by noon is the law. Um, and there's no way for me to uphold that law because there is no date received of custody. So that is one of the issues that we've had. Um, and reaching out to Indiana Election Division, um, and you all have that email from them. That's, that's what we're talking about? Yes. Um, with their recommendations of what the law states, and then you also have a letter from the Secretary of State, because I reached out to the Secretary of State, um, with the same concerns, and you have their recommendations of what they think um, needs to be done and what laws were broken from them. Um, we have had a couple of voters call saying that they specifically sent in their ABS applications to the Democrat Party um, because they received the mailers um, and they still have not received a ballot. And then when we looked up if we had received it yet, because I will be honest with you, sometimes the post office is slow. Um, we had one that was postmarked October 3rd literally and we just got it in the mail today it went through Louisville post office October the 3rd so the post office sometimes is slow which is it just is what it is um, but we have found that we have not received um, any application from for them um, and so they were concerned um, and so we they asked us as the clerk's office to process them new ABS applications and sent them in the mail um, we received back their applications then we sent their ballots and we received back their ballots and then we received applications from the Democrat Party um, in that process which is not saying that they ha I'm not I'm not accusing anybody of anything here um, but so they got two ballots no they got no they two only received two applications they got an application in the mail from the Democrat Party they filled it out and they mailed it back um, they have waited and waited. They said that they have never received an apple, a ballot in the mail. It had been many weeks. They had not received a ballot in the mail. So they called me as the clerk, or they called someone in my staff as the clerk and was checking on their application that they had sent to the Democrat Party. We, as the clerk office and the staff, looked up to see if we had received their application from the Democrat Party. We had not. Um, so they said, well, then can you please send us out one? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We did that. We sent out the application. We sent out, we received the application back that we sent as the clerk's office. Um, then we processed, we sent out their ballot, and we have received their ballot back from the clerk's process of the absentee application. Then we had received the application from the Democrat Party. So we has we as the clerk have to process every form that comes in. And so our problem was is and we have figured it out now um, that if we put in that second application requesting a ballot, it would cancel their first request and we were getting warning signs from the SBRS system, which is the system that we use um, from the state, saying that it would cancel their ballot. Um, and so we had to reach out to the state and figure out what we are to do there because we have to process every application that comes in. And the second one that came in from the Democrat Party um, is the most current application on file. But when we already have their ballot, in the locked room, 
you know, we're like, it, it, in the system said it was going to cancel that. Um, we found out that through the system, we still have to accept the application, but um, what we do is we reject that second application um, and put that it, we already had received one from the clerk's office, processed it, received a ballot back, and we have a system in place that it's not going to cancel that ballot. Um, but we do have to reject that second, second application. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know it's a lot of work, so. But there are applications from the Democratic Party that are being rejected because somewhere in the scheme of this thing, they were not turned in to your girl's office at any point, and the actual voter called your office. Yes. Went through that process and turned everything in. And so now then you receive something from the Democratic Party that if you had processed differently, would have canceled out somebody's vote. Yes. And you decided to process and reject those because obviously the antenna of the voter is. They want to vote, yes. And, and and I will say this, right, um, this is at no fault of any voter. And we have not, um, right. whether it has been through the voter requesting the absentee application for a second time, or whether it has came from the Democrat Party, the only absentee applications that we have rejected is if we have already received a ballot from the voter because they've already voted and we want to make sure that their vote counts so then that's that's when we are rejecting that second application because we actually already have the voters ballot in hand and will be processed on election day makes does that sense. make sense that makes sense does that make sense to everybody okay those are the only ones that we have rejected because we aren't rejecting any of these because this is at no fault of the voters. Um, but you're saying, just to be clear, you have steps in place to make sure two ballots are not being mailed out. Absolutely. Correct. All right. Yes. Good. Um, and then within that, we've had, um, so that was one of, so we've worked with not only the state um, in the election division, but we've also worked with SBRS. Um, to figure that out um, in that process. And then the second, or the third, fourth, I don't know where I'm on the process, um, we had a person turn in a ballot or ap absentee applications, um, and they knowingly and willingly changed the dates of when voters signed the absentee application. Um, and they didn't need to like mark out the date the voter did it. They just needed to put the date that they received it. Um, but the other step on that process is that when they marked out the date that the voter put in and put in their date, um, they then filled out the bottom part of the application saying that they assisted that voter. The affidavit part? Yes. Okay. Um, a complete day later. Um, so they said that the voter signed the original, some of the original dates was in August. Um, and so they marked that date out and they put that the voter signed on 10-2 and then the person filled out the affidavit of assistance saying that they helped assist them on 10-3, um, which none of those dates align. Well, um, no, you can't do that. Um, and so, is there an example that we can yeah. see? And then the person filled out a letter saying that they did it. And so, uh, and then I have a voter registration um, that had names marked out, dates marked out, and which is fine if somebody like messes up their signature, you just put a line out and resign. But the problem is, is the signature and the dates were different inks, and the date was um, a completely different handwriting. And so I have examples of that too for you all. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, I have one copy of that because it put in there two copies of that for the voter registration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I see it. Yeah. That's, do you want to see these? Do you want these, Zach? Um, I think he's I been. Know. I think he's been in all of those. Okay. okay. I don't have copies of them and don't need to see okay. them. Okay. Okay. 
what she just explained. <laughs> okay, so that is the voter registration one. And so if you look on the bottom, the signature was scratched out, which is fine. A voter can mess up, and they just line it out and rewrite their name. But then the date was marked out, and the date was redone. So was the date is a different handwriting. And I'm not a handwriting expert in any way, fashion, shape, or form. But to me, that is a clear, different date than was what the voter originally put. And like I said, I'm not a handwriting expert. That's why I'm bringing it to the election board, because... Um, and in the and this is a black and white copy, but it's two different color inks. So to say, I can't really tell because it's black and white. But it's two different color inks. The original ink is black, and I think the new date is a blue. Is one copy for her and one copy for me? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like they're the same. Yes. Okay. I just didn't do it. Does this date here say two? That's. Um, I don't have a copy for myself. Yeah, because it's his date of birth. Do I? Yes, I do. I'm sorry, I do. Um, you put his date of birth there. Put his date of birth. Well, like I said, I'm not a handwriting expert, but it was two different color inks. Um, and so I'm questioning this. This needs to be on the voter registration. I will have to see original on that because I can't tell on a black and white copy. Okay. Okay. And so that is pretty much um, everything I think within. Thank you. Um, and then I have this one. The last one is we had a a voter. Um, have traveling board assistance. Um, and so the traveling board, which is a bipartisan representation um, from the clerk's office, they went out to um, a nursing home. Do you remember which nursing home this was? Um, I think it's St. James Place, and it's not really a nursing home, is it? So, 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 yes. It's um, 1100 North Gardner. Is it Hickory Creek? I don't remember. It's, it was a nursing home. Um, so the traveling board went out there and assisted them with the traveling board. They're going to have a the traveling board assist. Um, but then I also received from the uh, I received a um, absentee application from the same voter, and this one has been filled out by somebody. It has the voter's signature, and the voter's signatures do match, but somebody assisted this person um, filling it out and then did not fill the affidavit of assistance out. So, and I have one example of that one. I'm like, you can clearly see that the signatures is the same as the voter. The top one is from the um, uh, traveling board. Right. And so that is, I think Mary Beth's it's in Mary it. Beth. Yeah. So that is Mary Beth's handwriting because she is assisting that voter. So the signatures match. But then on this one, the second one came in, and that is clearly not the voter's handwriting. Did it come in the mail? Um, this came in. One of the. Um, that we took at the window. The one that we took in from. And so, but there's no clear affidavit sign of assistance. And so, that was brought in. Right, okay. The signature is hers. Yes, the signature, as, as we have stated, and I'm going to keep, keep stating this, is at no fault of the voter. So the voter will still get to vote. But... Who helped her fill that out? Because obviously she needed help because she requested the traveling board. Which, and so she, if the second application was brought in after the travel board, it negates the travel board application, which means the voter can no longer get assistance. Right. That's why we have a travel board. Right. They're a part of the election board. Yeah. Right. And so that is the current request of the voter. And so the voter originally requested assistance from the traveling board. 
that they, the, a voter requested the traveling board, and then we now have received an ABS application that is signed by the voter. So we just, we're just running into all these hiccups. I'm gonna call them hiccups of how to make sure every vote gets counted and. Um, um, within that, um, the, the, in the flyers that were sent out from the Democrat Party, um, in several, they all said that they were, um, the paperwork said that they were paid for by the Democratic Club. Um, we've been looking in the clerk's office. I have never had a CFA4 finance report filed for the Democrat Club. So I was reached out to the state and um, asked for assistance of, I know we have our GOP party and we have our Democrat Central Committee party. Um, they both have filled out um, CFA4 forms and have done that. Um, but as the Democratic Club, I was like, do they have to um, file campaign finance reports and there is guidelines and restrictions of if they have a budget of certain things um, and that is in that email I've got some right. <laughs> I've got some papers in front of me <laughs> it is but I have a question about that. do you guys have two do you have two separate entities a club and the Democrats are there two okay yes. I always thought it was one thing Two. Yeah. Okay. So and so, I looked at the state, and the state, the state also looked up that um, the Democrat Club has never filed anything with the state of Indiana, that they are a Democrat club within the state. Um, and so, there is auxiliary party organization requirements um, to be if they if the club meets these requirements, that they are to be filed with the state and they are to be filing campaign finance reports. Um, mainly it, um, the purpose is to influence, do you want me to read the code that the state sent? You can, to I have it marked. That's right qualify, here. qualify an organization must meet all the following standards. An organization affiliated with a political party and is located within or outside Indiana that one, proposes to influence the election of a candidate or state legislature or state state legislative, local office, or school board, or the outcome of a public question, and has either had an annual budget of less than $5,000 in at least one of the last two years, or three, has not made a contribution of more than $1,000 to another committee or candidate, meets these things. Organization that meets these standards is not required to file a campaign finance reform. So, if you're above those thresholds and you meet the other requirements, my understanding is you have to file those. I think that question is I don't know if we're above those thresholds. Right, and I do not know either, but it is like that's, that's a question um, of I know that there has been. That's something that the election board is going to have to look into and investigate into uh, and ask for financial records, I guess. And is that a thing that we do, Zach? Do you know? Uh, I believe that you can investigate, you know. Yes, we can. Allegations of, yes. you know, election law violations and actually the statute that requires that you promptly initiate an investigation if you believe that there might be an issue. It doesn't mean that. There is an issue. It doesn't mean anybody's drawing conclusions about yeah, anything. Yeah, we're just looking um, into an investigation. Before anything would go further after an investigation, the person is entitled to notice uh, an opportunity to be heard at a you know, formal hearing, a formal open public hearing. Uh, but we're allowed to investigate situations that may rise to the level of election law violation. Yes, and so that was what was brought to my attention is that. Um, these flyers, and so I'm assuming that is paying for the printing of the flyers, um, the postage, and all the supplies from the Democratic Club. Um, and I have no record in the clerk's office of any Democrat Club having any kind of campaign finance filings. Um, okay. 
try this on the nights real quick. My papers are almost up. Are these what you gave me? Uh, on behalf of the party. Okay. They go along with the uh, altering of the absentee application. Okay. So this is, is what that? you guys submitted. Okay. Okay. I was because I didn't know. With IC codes and intent. Okay. Perfect. I just didn't know where that came from. I don't remember. Okay. Um, I have lots of papers. I know. I do too. And like they're they're getting every round. I try to keep them trying to keep them organized. Um. So after speaking with, um, not speaking with emailing, I emailed um the Indiana Election Division um on October the seventeenth. Um, at do we have that? Yes, it's this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I emailed them on October the seventeenth at eight and 8 51 in the morning with all of these concerns that I, I had I had um in pertaining to the disclaimer on the envelopes um this um the democrat chair said that it is a requirement under state law that the um, party should have had a disclaimer um, on the envelope. Um, not including the disclaimer is a violation of IC 31142F. Um, a person knowingly does any of the following commits a level six felony. Um, it's right here. We are on this. Yeah, I'm just got my page. So we're on this one. It's got red. It's mm -hmm. got red. It's the first one right here at the top. <laughs> Just look off me. Just follow along. Okay. I gave it to you. I know I did. I know. It's it's in one of these. Okay. So um, the Democrat chair says that this is a requirement under state law. And the Republican chair of the election division. I don't think the level six felony language is in reference to the. Um, Ballots, fraudulent application, so that has to do with assisting voters. That's more of the perjury part. Um, it also says assist if you go back to the back of it where it's highlighted with the disclaimer, this is specifically under the disclaimer law. It says um, assistance of voter in completing an absentee ballot application in violation of 311. So anything within 311, from the way I understand it, they are saying that that. I'm just reading the email. I get what you're saying. In violation of yes, so, any general provision. Yes. So, and we can we can call the state if we need to clarify that. And I like that's why I printed out this email because I am not an attorney. I will state that right now that I am not an attorney. But she said that they did highlight them because mm -hmm. of how it referenced back to the disclaimer. It's your summary. This is, I'm just going off of, I'm just giving all of the information. No, I'm just giving every information that I have received to keep everybody in the loop of what's going on. And just to be clear, this is the first time we are seeing it too. We did not have this information prior to this meeting. So, 
Yes, the only, um, because this is the thing, is we are a board of three, and we know that if we cross talk, if I talk to them, um, it's open door. We have yeah. to follow open door yeah, policy. And so that would be a quorum. And so the only person that I have, the only the only things that I have done. You don't have to talk about discussing anything. But... Yeah. So is with the Indiana Election Division. So um, second question was the return envelopes. Um, there is no state law that prevents an absentee application to be mailed to a third party. Um, there is nothing. Both both part both Republican and. Um, Democrat election division agrees on this one. Um, the flyer mailing states that the Scott County Democrat Club um, paid for this um, with the CFA short form. Um, both parties do agree that they have no record of a Democrat club on there, and so that is a CFA for thing that we need to search and look into. Um, and they give the instructions of what the party organization's requirements are. Um, when the Democrat uh, party is turning in and they are not putting on the date received with the chain of custody. Um, Democrat um, election board says that the date should be included on the form for tracking purposes. The Republican says that it should be tracked, it should be on there. Um, it makes it a level six felony violation to assist voters in completing the absentee application in violation of IC3 11. Um, because that, that's the way that we, as the clerk, when we receive these, we can check the chain of custody and that they're done within the 10 days at noon. And we have not, most of them that we have received, we have not had no date of custody on there. So we have no clue of knowing that. So um, both parties said that it has to be included on there and it has not been included on many of them. Um, the, I, uh, I am now receiving calls from voters who have stated that they have sent applications to the parties that have not received them, um, and then we are processing them as a clerk and doing those things. Um, it goes back into the thing of that the party has to, and any candidate, not just a party, but anybody has to return those within a 10-day window by noon or date of custody. Um, both parties agree that that is still the, the issue that's happening here. Um, on the one where I received 13 ABS applications um, and the dates have been marked out and changed, um, this goes into forgery um, for IC code 354352. Um, and this is also a level six felony as well, both parties. Um, and so that is everything that I have on those, this particular complaint, complaints, put it that way. We still have another complaint to discuss, but the rest of the questions on this email is for that. Um, I reached out to the Secretary of State asking for their advice because they are the Chief Election Officer of the state, and I have a letter from the Secretary of State. Um, that he is in pursuit of um, IC code 31142F. The following statement says that the disclaimer does have to be on the envelope. As for the date of custody, chain of custody, that those dates have to be on there. Um, IC 31142L, um, they state that they see that that has been violated and also for the ones that um, the dates were marked out and the assistance, the voter assistance was put in on 10 3 and 10 2, and the August date was marked out. Um, they find that that is um, under an IC code 31424 a or 25A, and so that is the alert from the Secretary of State of what they find has been mishandled too. And so now at the election board, we need to decide on what we need to do. Well, protocol is we would have hearings for people. Um, I guess the question is, and I can ask Zach or pose it to the party, do you, is it collectively as the Democratic Party a hearing or? I think that you have representatives <clears throat> who are designated 
to represent the parties and um, that they would be individuals who would be uh, necessarily speaking on behalf of the organization unless the organization wanted to designate somebody else. Well, the process is that we do hearings, so that would be the next step. So and I guess part of the issue is, I know some of these issues are the Democrat club versus you know, the, the party, so I don't know who the Democrat club person I, is. They haven't filed anything with the county. So. So, I, so my opinion is that most of these ABS applications are coming through the mailing that the Democrat Club sent. Um, and it says that on the flyer that it is the Democrat. And I have copies. Let of, me see. Can I see the flyer? Is that it? That's, that's the flyer that's coming out. With these, and, and the thing is, is most of them that we're receiving are trifolded, they're highlighted. Um, I'm not an investigator, I'm not a detective. Like I said, we need to have this looked into. But um, the ones that we have received from voters that have come back, you know, we have examples of what it they says look club. like. It says the Democrat Club. Um, this is paid for by Scott County Democrat Club. Um, and then there's instructions. I mean, is that the name of the organization? I honestly do not know because I have no record or filings within the state or within the clerk's office. I don't see anything on the Secretary of State's website. That the Democrat Club has even registered. <laughs> so, that goes into a whole other... Is there an address associated with the... Um, the envelope that is um, addressed, that it mails back to you, goes back to the Scott County Democrat, this, the, the prepaid envelope that says Scott County Democrat, Democrats, um, 67 South 1st Street, Scottsburg, Indiana, 47170. So that... That would be Democrat headquarters. If I'm, is that Democrat head? Yes. Okay. Same address for both club and headquarters. Same mailing address. Yeah. Although we don't technically get any of the mail besides those there. I mean, both the mail it goes to you and one of them goes to me. Do you operate independently? Yes, sir. We try to. Okay, do you, do you know the name of the person who runs the Democrat Club? Yeah. Okay, what's the name? Jim Bob. Well, I'm elected president of the yeah. club. I don't run the club. Elected president of the club. I believe that Mr. Boswell would be the person who would be subpoenaed here. Okay. I'm just thinking about the return address, though, because the return address is, goes to just the Democrats. So, wouldn't both party, wouldn't both entities miss? That's up to you. I mean, I, I think that that's kind of the issue is that two entities acting out of the same location. It's confusing. Both of you. I would assume we're good with that. Awesome. Two of them. Let me talk about that. Oh, then it would be because the other mailer that just says Scott County Democrats, so it would be both entities. So you can set a joint hearing at the next available, you know, public hearing date, or you know, it doesn't have to be this month, but it's up to you. Yes. Um. Um, 
within that email, um, the state also said that at, that state did probably should be called for an actual investigation. Fine, let me just say this. Um, this is not the venue to you know, prosecute some type of right. criminal action. And anybody that has provided information that they believe they have personal knowledge of a violation of a criminal statute in the state of Indiana, you can at any point go to the Indiana State Police and report that. Um, so don't think that, you know, just because you've given something here today, and maybe you don't exactly hear what may be expected or you hear something different than you expected, you have every opportunity to go to whomever you like to, and, and the Indiana State Police would be the investigating agency, I believe, or something like this. But um, I mean, Indiana Code 3-6-5-31, if the county election board determines that there is a substantial reason to believe an election law violation has occurred, it shall expeditiously make an investigation. If in the judgment of the board, after affording due notice and opportunity for a hearing, a person has engaged is or, or is about to engage in an act or practice that constitutes or will constitute a violation of a provision of this title or of a rule or order issued under this title, the board shall take the action considered appropriate under the circumstances including referring the matter to the attorney general or the appropriate prosecuting attorney. If you would like to, in advance of any potential due process hearing, go ahead and refer the matter to uh, the Indiana State Police after you've made a determination that there's a substantial reason to believe an election law violation has occurred. I, I think you have the authority and ability to do those things. I think the board would have to vote on that. Yeah. Again, yeah. Any, anyone with personal knowledge can also go refer anything that they you know, want to refer to the Indiana State Police. Yes, I was, just, I was just going off of the email that what the Indian Election Division referred to because I forgot to put that in there. Uh, if the violator ever identifies violations of the law, we recommend that the individual with, known, with knowledge of the facts file a report with law enforcement. So. I'm just trying to get all the info that has been given to me. And that's, I mean, that statute's an, it's not an exhaustive list of the things that you can do. I think it says including, not, you know, limited to. Right. Um, so, you know, I think theoretically, you could also table the idea of referring it to the state police and schedule these for hearings and give people an opportunity to be heard prior to referring. So that, I think that's a discretionary issue for the board. And so that, I think that's everything. Um, Mr. Wilson did have a public request, a public document. I emailed that to him, and he, um, I do have hard paper copies. I emailed that to you, and I have hard papers if you want. That good email? I hadn't, I hadn't seen that email. Um, I sent it to you this morning. Okay. And I have copies, hard if you want hard too. Okay. And that stayed in the email too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, date. so we need to set a hearing date. That's what I'm. I'm not comfortable with referring anything to the state police until I've heard yeah. both stories. Both. I think you're due a hearing, unless anyone disagrees with me. We can vote on it if you'd like. Probably should. But I need someone to make the motion because I can't. I make a motion to set a hearing date for the clubs and the ballots. Okay. Application. Um, application. I would say it's app. It's the it's the absentee application conundrum and the club versus Democrat Party finance forms. So. I will second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, there's no opposed. So we need to set a date. And since you're here, you make it so that you're available, obviously. With your schedule. What do you have available? 
Oh, why don't you, you all can just set the date and I'll figure it out. Well, <clears throat> I cannot do next week because I travel for work. At least until the 31st, be in Fort Worth. I'm going to say I'm not available the 4th and the 5th. <laughs> oh yeah, we do have an election to run. <laughs> so, and we're unavailable the 1st. What? We have poll training. We have poll worker training on the 1st. So it will have At to one be. Six. Um, so I'm, we can I, do it that morning. I, I'm available that morning and stuff with that, yeah. On what day? November 1st. I just, anyway. yeah, I just have to be. <laughs> hmm? I have to be. Okay. Well, he needs to be here for it. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just. I just listening for the dates. Um. Well, that takes us to after the election. Fourth and fifth are definitely out. Um. Yeah. For sure, and we'll all be here till like one o'clock in the morning. So, oh, don't say that. Oh, wow. and that takes us into the middle of November. Um, what about okay? Because we have to have forty-eight hours to post, right? <coughs> yes, to have a public meeting. Maybe this week. The 25th? Could you guys do the 25th? I can't be here the rest of the week. Okay. Yeah. I can't be here the 25th. Okay. So we're not doing that. That's power of the purse. Um, so what about the week of the 14th? I'm sorry, the 11th. We have to come up here on the. I think you can't meet Monday, but you can meet. Because that's a holiday, Veterans Day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think, um, are we open Veterans Day? No. Okay, no, I can't remember. Okay. And you can't do that Friday because that's your provisional. What, the 8th? That's the Friday. 15th. 15th. Yeah. Yep, that's on my calendar. Do you have a question? I do. What's the question? I'm, I'm hearing after the election. Sure. It will there be a ruling if there is a violation prior to the election? That's, that's the, if there is any, if you forward what, this, what do you say? A ruling means. Well, if you forward this to the state and the state says there is a violation, we don't forward anything to the state. You, so the 250 possible votes that these candidates are could get. No, let's yeah, let's let's be real clear here. Yeah, that's, there's no there's no. Uh, challenge to a voter's right to vote the way they this is whether other individuals committed acts that would not invalidate these ballots period oh okay yeah. no, so that, yeah. this yeah. is at no this is, fault, this is no fault okay. to the voter none of those well, I just want to uh, as a as a voter I want to make sure mine counts it should count mm -hmm. okay yes. and everything that they've done has been to ensure yes. that every vote gets counted despite Again, allegations yeah. that there have been, uh, and those issues have not yet been determined, but let right. me be clear, uh, issues related to other people's decision making that potentially violates Indiana law. Okay. And if that goes on, and, that, and this board were to hypothetically vote and say that election law violation occurs, nothing happens again. Okay. It gets referred to either Indiana State Police, prosecuting attorney, or the attorney general's office, or all the above. Attorney general would prosecute any civil issue. Uh, local prosecutor could, in his discretion, prosecute any criminal issue. We don't have any control over that. Okay. Um, we don't have any control over what the Indiana State Police does. This is not going to be a venue uh, to invalidate votes. If you're a candidate, you have all the rights a candidate has uh, within the time frames provided by statute to file your own challenges uh, and methods <coughs> either uh, during or post election. This has no effect on those. Thank you. <coughs> Can I ask a question? Hmm? 
who's accountable? I mean, if this comes to pass, who all's involved in this? Well, that's kind that's, of determined that's, that's, in the fact finding and the yeah. hearing. And I mean, we're talking about the president, we're talking about everybody on that ballot, everybody that's running for office. What we're talking It'll about. be. Who well, it makes it clear that, that, I mean, if you're wearing a sheriff's office, you know, no, so you have stand <laughs> regular criminal law, but, uh, you know, it's a person who knowingly or intentionally has the, I mean, the state of mind mens rea requirement for all criminal prosecutions applies to the, any of the issues that have been raised today, and only someone who, again, committed the violation with that state of mind, uh, you know, could theoretically be held responsible, but that's again not something that even we're going to decide at a hearing. That, that responsibility, all that stuff, that's prosecutor, attorney general, state police, way down the road, election law. We don't put anybody in jail, right? Correct. We do have not have the ability to prosecute anyone. I am not a prosecutor, so that's not yeah. that's not our authority whatsoever. Um, but the hearing portion, we. That's always been our procedure to allow someone to have a hearing, and that it also states it in this that that's protocol, and that's what we follow. And then after that, then then chips will fall where they fall. But that is just due process. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the clear it up for me. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, so we still need to determine a date, and to answer someone else's question, whether this happened, it might have been you, whether we do this before or after the election does not have any implication on the election because th this is not the voters fault and every vote our job is to ensure our the votes count okay. so um the date doesn't matter and, and like we said again yeah, this this is not a, you know, a specific party issue or anything yeah. like that and this is not going to be the venue to have those kind of fights and certainly is not the place to have those fights to try to alter an outcome of an election okay okay Thanks. So, what about November the 13th? Does that work for this this board and you two? So that we can move forward. Mm -hmm. November 13th? It's a Wednesday. Is that okay? Are you guys good with November 13th? Just a minute. I'm checking on my camera. You see what dates are due that day? Depends on what time. Uh oh. For you? Well, what's better? Three or four o'clock or later. Well, I'd say four o'clock or later. That would be okay with me too because I can't do a lunchtime meeting that day. So. Or even late. I mean, I can do even later than that, but it can't be. I can't do work hours that day. Four? Four? Mm -hmm. I think I can make it work. Give me two seconds. Never have a 13 force for me. All cases, too. I have a couple of deadlines that we'll have to do, but yeah, we can do that. November 13th at 4 o'clock. May I ask a question about the 257 applications? Were those from one person or those from multiple people, or do we know? If they are for multiple people, and yes, I do know. Okay. So, in that, I just want confirmation that they have approved that answer. There's 250 applications that have come in without a date signed by the receiver. Those have been processed, and those people have been correct? Yes. I didn't hear these words. Yes. 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 Unless there was the only ones rejected are the ones that I've already mailed the ballots to. Yes. Because they've already received the ballot. Because mm -hmm. it was a double. Only ones because it was double, and I can't send two ballots. To and I, again, the idea everybody's vote's going to get counted. I think it's but important not to twice. understand that. <laughs> but not twice. <laughs> but it's important to understand what Michelle did to ensure that those votes got counted the right way, which is located the correct way to process but reject those absentee ballot applications so that the vote did not get uh, nullified. 
Now, I will say within all the ABS applications <coughs> that we have received, there have been some that um, the Social Security number was completely wrong, or but we notified those birth voters. dates were wrong, and that was at the voters' fault. Mm -hmm. And so we have to send a letter saying, hey, we received your ABS application. This did not match with what your voter registration was. Um, please fill this out. And I sent it and, and, sent, and, and that is at the voter's fault if they didn't do their social security number right. Or, and that is at no fault of anything. So there has been some that have. Yeah, we're, we're talking about just the specific issues that we've identified. Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying yes. okay. all other absentee ballot applications. Yes. Well, okay. Correct information yeah. So November the 13th at 4, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare try to answer all the allegations that have been made. Today, but I will say, nobody from the Democrat Senate Committee or the Democrat Club or anyone who works with those applications has knowingly or you uh, know intentionally committed crime. I would tell you to get an attorney. <laughs> Ooh, okay, uh, but just in the hearing, so it's it's a state but, law. Some of it's black and white state law. So, uh, you know, and everybody is considered to be on constructive notice of what the law is. Uh, and, you know, it's not, it's not an argument in court. I didn't know what the law was. Correct. And I can't be your attorney because I'm on this board. <laughs> He's on speed dial. Um, Okay, so we need to, so we've got that. Yes. Where's my agenda? I've lost it. So then we have another. We have more. We have one other one. Yes. That has nothing to do with any of that. And I will actually let you take the lead on that one because that one I brought into you. Oh, we just have a, what is this? We have a complaint for a William Best for the school board painted, painted signs, correct? Yes. What's the complaint? I painted three signs on some wood that I had. And the first one that I did, I threw a big Scooby-Doo on it. And down at the bottom, I had paid for by William Best to try to match it like the signs that I had made and put up. And I sprayed it with clear, covering to, to the weather and then after the winds came through it was out of Lexington by Leroy's I had permission to put it up there went back out there someone notified me it was laying down it was all gone I made two other signs I was told that because I was making the signs from just a couple of pieces of cheap wood that I had that since I wasn't having it made I took the advice of somebody Afterwards, I was told by someone else, no, you should probably have that on there. So I came into the clerk's office on Friday and asked the clerk, do I need to have that on there? She said yes. So I did go out and make sure that the other three, the three signs that I had made had that on there. So they've been but, fixed? Yes, but there was a period of time of my fault of listening to somebody else because of how it was made. There was a short period of time to where that was not on the signs. But I did correct it last week after talking to the court. And I've heard talk that we were going to fine people for not having that on there. And up to five thousand dollars. The extreme amount I'm saying. That is never our intention. It's to let people know, especially if you're a first timer, you have to have that paid for on there. We didn't make that rule. It's in an IC Correct. code. And that's why I wanted to come today, not to argue, but just to let you guys, and, and as a police officer, I understand ignorance is just like the, the gentleman said, ignorance of the law is not an excuse to get away with something or to do something that's not correct. Mm -hmm. I just wanted it to be known that on my own, I came to the clerk's office to check to make sure I was doing it correctly. And when I that's was good. told that I was not doing it correctly, I went out immediately and fixed that. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to come here today and Thank let you. that be known. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. an it's, it's a learning thing. It is. Four years ago, I ran, but I was unopposed. 
I did not do any signs. Mm -hmm. um, I had looked at making the big vinyl signs like some other people had done when I was told the price. <laughs> I was like, holy cow. What I'm running for is a very, very small pay. And I, I wanted to have some signs out. I got asked. And I saw those big signs. I had some wood. I thought, well, I'll just put it on this. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the first one, I did have it. But the one, you can still see like little faded pink and everything on the one at the Lexington. But yeah. after that, the other two, I did not. But like I said, when I went and spoke to the clerk's office and they told me, yes, I do need that mm -hmm. on there, I went out immediately. And it, and I mean, it is big. You can see it when you drive by. Because I couldn't find the correct font because it's different fonts for different signs. Well, there's a discrepancy on the font because some state statute says seven and says some says seven point five. Yes, we so noticed that. It's big enough to where if you're driving by and it's in the field, you can read it. Are you talking about the sign scoreboard? Yeah. I think the issue is that the sign didn't contain any of the magic words. Just a labor, right? Or right. Yeah. And that's what I was telling them. The first sign it did have, and it because it was down at the bottom and the wetness and it falling over, it was gone. And then I was told that because I had used just old cheap wood, I didn't have it go have it made, I didn't need it. But then I was told a week or two later that I did need it. So I came into the clerk's office to ask and they told me I needed it. So I went out immediately and put that on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just like I saw your video. Mm -hmm. You know, it's put on there. It's it was fine. an honest mistake. I fixed it. I, I self-reported. I checked. I wanted to make sure it was correct, and that's why I'm here today. And the the fonts on the the signs you guys stick in, mm -hmm. they are they are so freaking small that you can't see them. But it only has to be seven point five. And all my signs have those. And I will tell you, I have looked. I have stopped and took pictures so I could zoom in to make sure it's there on the ones that's been manufactured or whatever you know because complaints was coming in so my thing is try to avoid complaints and rumors started and, and, I, and I don't even want to know <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me I was told that it was wrong I found out so I wanted to make sure it was right and that's why I'm here I'm, I'm not interested in it's knowing fixed. who or what it's fixed but also just I think it's always good that you did ask because there are things that the disclaimer doesn't apply to. So like if you did a shirt or a pin or something, you don't have to have that on there. So it's good to ask that. And I would, this would be a conversation for another meeting, but this candidate guide that we get as an election board is probably a good tool for candidates to have at some point we too, to that we need to make sure that you, the online. candidates are getting. We're gonna order those. Or at least direct them to that or um, order it. We do, um, mm -hmm. when they fill out the paperwork, I tell them that all of the information is online for them. I think if we I think a hard copy is good too. Get the book and put it with the packet. And then I do want to say she was very Those clear. Are very expensive. Michelle has been very good we'll about making sure we have the information and going and everything else. And that's why I came to her Friday to ask to see yep. if I was doing it correctly or not. Yep. So all good. I okay. appreciate it. All good. Thank you. Yep. All good. I don't have any issues with yeah. that. And, and I just want to there say, is no I, complaint on you, so I, I don't know. I, I get that, but I just want to say I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, and you got a lot on your plate. I mean, I've been to two meetings, and I see you guys have a lot to deal with. But I, while we got everybody in the room here from both parties, I just want to share something with you guys. I understand that some things may not be correct with what the Democrats have done. And ignorance of the law is no excuse. I understand that 100%. Do I, as Joe Taxpayer over here, feel like that anything was done with ill intent? I do not. But I think everybody in this room knows what kind of perception the public has of our government right now. It's in the trash. There's not much confidence there. And when word of this gets out with words like level six felonies, against one party from the other gets out, what do you think is going to happen there? It's going to absolutely destroy the public's confidence in each and every one in this room. So let's keep that in mind whenever we're, there's ways to educate people. If things are done maliciously and with ill intent, absolutely they need to answer to those. But I don't believe anybody in this room did anything with Bill and Tina. I just want to share that. So, but I appreciate what you guys did. Well, that's you our job, job is to, whether 
I don't care what party you are, honestly. Right. It's our job yeah. to be fair and make sure that what we're doing is the by law. the law. Law. And that you guys are in a tough position. I totally understand that, but I just wanted to share that with everybody in this room so they understood. What, and I think everybody knows how the, how the public sees everybody in this room. And yeah. speaking of things getting out there and, and all that, just to be clear, you there is no complaint. We have no complaint on you. I so. understand. I do. Yes. I do. Yeah. Am I okay? <laughs> You're fine. You're okay. fine. Yeah. You fixed it. You you had one minor complaint that it didn't have it on there. You fixed it. You don't have a complaint, but you could put the disclaimer on there before you, before it's on. you do. Your, okay. It's on. Yeah. You might want to redo your video too, because it wasn't a complaint. Appreciate and it, it makes it look like somebody complained on you, and it's not true. So this, just this is throwing it out there. Appreciate it. And I appreciate your your words too. Cool. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So, do what? So well, now we have open discussion. Now it's open discussion. I have, I have Sorry. one other question before we get into that. Sorry. Uh, so I know that you've scheduled a hearing for the two entities. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's, I've seen the copies. You mentioned that you wanted to see the originals. So on, on one of these, the, hang on, I've got to get through all these papers. This one? She said there's a discrepancy in the writing, but because it, this is in black and white, the discrepancy is in the ink. And the original copy has blue ink and a different color ink. But it's black and white. It's, I can't tell what's wrong with this in black and white. <coughs> and is this? She's going to get it. I guess is this is this one of the absentee ballot applications that was turned in with a yes. note from um, the person? No, that, that one was not turned in with a note. We when we so when they come to the window, um, we take the affidavit, we take it, and we just count. And we just we are not looking at anything on the application. We are just counting how many voter registrations is, how many ABS applications there is. We write it on there, and then we take them back to the office and we process them. Um, because I mean, we're just we can't sit there and process everyone out the window. And, and um, see, I'm just I'm just more asking about this. Uh, if you look at page five, number nine. And what? The email. Yeah. Okay. That's not it. <laughs> Again, I don't think this is a complaint. I think this was the person who turned it in. A written description of what they did. Um, this is not with that. That's one. not is, part of that. That is. This is a completely different one that was turned in. Okay. This is just another example. Okay. This this has nothing to do with that. There is the. I scheduled a hearing for that issue. No, this is the original. What? So what did you end up doing with this? So we have reached out to the voter. We have tried to contact the voter, and I do not know. The I don't know what they're talking about. I'm sorry. So know. this, the one that I just handed. So we reached out the to the voter. Oh, okay. We reached out to the voter, um, and we are trying. We did the processes of trying to correct it to make sure that that voter's vote got counted, that they got registered, and that they got. I don't know. We took the procedures and the precautions of reaching back out to the voter. Okay. This may be repetitive. How did how did this come in? It came in through the Democrat Party when they brought in multiple others. It was sent yes. back to them. Who sent this out? Those are answers that I do not have because I have no date of custody. I have no. I know the person who brought it in. Where would where would somebody have gotten this? type of form versus a paper copy. So the card stock is usually from the clerk's office. Okay. Um, but anybody can come in and say, can I please have a stack full 20, okay. 30? They, that is, that is public documents that go okay. out. That's what I was asking yes. is, cause I know. And they can print them offline. I mean, there's several places. Yeah, but just being yeah. card stock. I yeah. just wanted where did, who, how would somebody have gotten Anybody it? can come to the clerk's okay. office and request this. That's mm -hmm. what I needed to know. Yep. 
And so to answer just... your question, Zach, number nine is a separate issue, yes, and we do need to determine that individual. That's kind of what I'm saying is, do you need to schedule a separate hearing? We do. That's separate, yeah. that's separate from you all. This one is number nine. Now, it was returned within the... Or could be not... That was that was returned from the Democrat Party. So, so. Can I ask a question? Yes. Is that an application or a registration? Registration. And it came with an application, I guess. Yes. And there's no date of custody on either or. And the person that brought it in, I stopped that individual and I said, "Hey, I was like, why is this marked out? Because we started looking at it. Like, why is this marked out?" And um, they didn't really have an answer. They're like, well, do you want me to take it back and get with the voter? And I was like, well, no, I, I can handle that. I can I can call the voter or we can send a letter to the voter. We can, we can address the issues to make sure that it is done properly. All right, let me ask, let me ask a question for the Democrat Party. Who is, so with all of this, because this is pertaining to someone else who's helping you with, with absentees as well. So... I don't know. I mean, the, a lot of the parties in now didn't have any registration. But the registration has been done earlier. We never sent out any, any uh, voter registration uh, applications this fall. Okay. So I don't know what that one concerned. But it was returned. But it was returned by an individual um, with applications from the Democrat Party, yes. Okay, so they could have got the registration somewhere else and filled that out, and we had nothing to do. So I think my request would be when we do. You can tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. That whenever you do your Democrat, whenever you come in for your hearing, can you bring the others who are doing application, absentee applications with you? The other individuals who are helping with that. Well, I could, they turn, they so, should have turned in that. So the what I would say is the three the three phone numbers that are on that letter that are mm -hmm. coming out with the those people probably need to be here at that okay. hearing as well. That's nice. And that will address number nine. Me so, and okay, no, okay. that will cover number nine. Then, if I have who, a comes. whoever turned that in to fill out the, the form that's that it was. turned in, so it was. that way you can. Yeah. And I, I, I can tell you who it was if you guys want to know that. I'm just trying to keep, I'm just trying to be respectful sure. for all individuals. Jerry said the name. I said it, I think. <laughs> Did her? I mean, my question is it's public do you believe that person's entitled to their own? independent hearing because he's saying he's not involved in the registration part i don't know whether he would know. i mean i i understand you're saying they need to be here regardless because they're assisting you all well, i'm not we're not even sure if she assisted with voter registration because this came from the clerk's office yeah, so it was just turned in with no an application idea. so we don't know that yeah. really but do you know who it is yes the person who turned that in turned it in with an affidavit and it was turned in with let me get this back to you so I don't get this lost in all of this. Because <laughs> that's the original. Is it the same one that's always that's going to be in here? I would say it wouldn't be a bad idea to just start Do with it. the person. Right. Be in Iva. So bring Iva with you. Okay, we'll let her know. That should solve it. Or help. This, this will be on the 13th? Or is this the 7th? No, it's 13th, 4 p.m. Okay. So we'll still be doing this after the election too, and then, right, we have all of the post-election yes. work we have to do as well. So I'd like to make a comment before we come back. Can you speak up just a little bit? I can't hear you. Yeah, they're talking to you. The application that we have sent out. Person that they would like to vote by name did not have a disclaimer. On it. I'm telling you that I'm now. really like. Let's, I, just wanna, I just want to. I just want to tell you guys, like, okay. please right. go get an alone. attorney. I'll leave that alone then. I. This okay. is not the place where we want. If there are other complaints besides what the Democrat Club has done. 
I think those persons should be contacted, whoever turned those in, and have their due process as well. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree. Yeah, this. There's persons. Well, and what I'm saying is, did they get a copy of this? Y'all wasn't to be um, here to be to, I handed that specific um, just to you. voted on or anything like that. This was just a special meeting, and basically because I wasn't here for our original meeting because I was out sick, so they didn't want to do anything without me present. So they rescheduled this special meeting so they could go over all this stuff that's been and I just want to be clear. I would probably request that you, at a minimum, acknowledge that you believe that there's a substantial basis to believe that there has been an election law violation sufficient to schedule a hearing. That's, that's, the, that's the statutory. I feel like law. that's implied, but yes. Okay, I just want to make sure that's a consensus. But to speak that out loud, yes. Again, I think so too. So, 13th, you two and Iva. Um, is there anything else we need to cover? I, I do have just an open discussion, some updates. Okay. Like good things, positive things. Um, do you want to do that before anybody else speaks, or are we going to close is that? That is up to you all. Okay, what do you want to do? Receiving that says anything. Yeah, let's see, because you guys it's always like, good to end on a good note. Lunch time. <laughs> People have been here a while. So is there more public discussion, open discussion? Again, I'm not trying to cut off public discussion. I just I'm trying to be mindful of everyone's time too. It is we have been here an hour and a half. Yeah, I'm trying to be mindful of your right to remain silent. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody good for this process? Are we doing Miranda rights at this meeting now? No, but I'm a criminal defense attorney by <laughs> trade. And okay. All right, so that's no open discussion from you all. Then We're you done. can continue with what you have then. Okay, um, so I have a couple of things, um, just updates. Um, I have already let um, both party chairs look at these. Um, we had the Hoosier Hills um, program um, this this time and we have actually eight students that are going to be participating um, in the polling centers um, so I'm super excited about that. Um, we do have a couple of deadlines that are coming up that I need to contact the party chairs with letting them know um, provisional ballot counters that we need and I also need to send an email in the same saying that um, the um, sample ballots are ready for their inspections for election day. Um, so I just need to send those um, out because those deadlines are coming up. Um, so provisional ballots counters are we just going to ask for just the normal four, which is the two election board members and then your proxies if we need the proxies um, for the provisional ballot counters. Or do we as the board want more than just those four? We need to let them know what number we want per IC code. Don't worry, don't worry. Are we doing an early? We're, uh, we're looking at um, signatures. Uh, it's provisional ballot counters, mm -hmm. um, is what it is. And the deadline is, I can read you the okay. Those are the ones done at the pollings. Um, yes. Uh, so we have to, um, by noon, the county election board needs to notify the county chairman and two major political parties of the number of team of provisional ballot counters to be appointed IC 311.733. So normally our provisional um, ballot counters is just um, the election board and the two proxies. Um, are we wanting to tell them that we want more than that or are we wanting to keep it to where it's just this? I think we're fine with that. I don't okay. have an issue with it. Okay. And then I just need to send an email letting the um, county chairman know that uh, the sample ballots are ready for inspection. That would be at the home um, places. So all of the sample ballots and the party chairs are more than welcome to come and inspect those. I to say that. Um, as for poll workers, um, um, I, the Republican chair, um, we have the poll workers. Um, I never received any names from the Democratic Party chair. Um, for any poll workers, the deadline was on the 
Did, there were none turned in? Nobody? I had none turned um, The deadline was October the 15th. Um, at noon, I had none turned in from the Democrat um, chair. Um, I reached out to the Democrat um, election board member on, I think, the 17th. I don't remember what they texted you. I don't remember either, but he um, didn't try to turn any in after the deadline either. No, he has not. I have not received any okay. um, on that. So um, I have proceeded with the permission from the Democrat um, election board member to start filling those poll worker positions. Um, we've got almost all of the positions filled. I've got a couple of spots that I, I'm still working on, um, just simply because a couple of people had to drop out that were turned in from the Republican Party. And so that's just everyday um, kind of things. Um, and then, I have three things and I can't remember the third thing. <laughs> and I specifically remember to say the three things. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the, the poll workers, the email. Oh, and the kids, no, so that's it. Yeah, okay. so. So yeah, I did give you permission to fill those. That's, I want that noted in the minutes. Um, I don't think there's anything else, right? Nope, I don't have, unless you guys have any updates. Um, just uh, election uh, early voting is going on right now at the um, here at the courthouse Monday through Friday, so <coughs> is lunch is twelve thirty to noon. This Saturday and next Saturday, um, we'll be at the courthouse in Austin High School, um, and then that Monday, November the fourth, we have early voting until noon. Do you want to reiterate because um, we have public here about being able to put signs up? Yes. So any candidate at the Austin high school on the two Saturdays um, early voting um, the Austin high school said that we are allowed to put you guys are allowed to put out um, candidate signs for that that Saturday voting and um, there is the new law that it is 50 feet in circumference radius of the door so it's not just like a straight shot it's like in circumference of it um, the, the school, our, the school, Austin school said that we could do that. Um, they just have to be picked up that evening um, or early that, that next morning and they cannot be put while school is going on or in that week. Is that so, just for, I'm sorry, is that just for Jennings Township or is that for all the townships that can go there? I'm so we are now a vote center and so anybody can vote at any location so anybody can put candidate signs on those two Saturdays at Austin Girls okay. Gym High School. So that's because we're about center now, so anybody can vote anywhere. Okay. Okay. You don't have to vote right there. No, so yeah, it, it's just like early voting. Yeah, okay. it's just like um, it is October the 26th. It's this Saturday and next Saturday and November the 2nd. Yep, so in the school, and I did have, I do have an email from the school that the courthouse, the commissioners do not want it at the courthouse on the two Saturdays, but the school has allowed it. Could do it Friday until after it comes out, and then it needs to be done, picked up by midnight, mm -hmm. okay. yes. right? By midnight, or is there a time Friday or, that we shouldn't put anything out until after a certain time? I, I thought it said after school. he said, after, he said school. after he said after school activities. So, mm. I so if there's like a that's pretty vague. Oh, no. It said after school and activities. So. Who said, was it Trevor? Um, it was Joe Smith. Joe Smith is so, but. Yeah. Well, Trevor's my neighbor. I'll, I'll verify it. I'll ask. Yeah. But I know there's a game. I'll just ask him. What there's he a meant. game. That's at the junior high, so they won't be the signs there. I was going to say there's I'd a game say, Saturday. I'd say you're probably fine after 5 p.m., but I'll verify that with the superintendent. <coughs> so yeah. the 50-foot radius, would that be the... I guess the northernmost doors on the back side. Yes. Gym. Is that so where that, where that is where. So that's where the shoot. Yeah. So it's called the shoot. The girls, girls gym. gym. Yeah. So that's where like the shoot begins. Um, right. But it does have to be like circumference and radius. Um, Which is almost that top parking lot, pretty much. Right. You can't put any up there. The bottom parking lot, I think, is like 58 feet from the door. 
And so I mean, a, a lot of people put it like at the, when you first go into the high school, like they put it oh, in the like early. I'm getting prime. I do this around. <laughs> round about, and then like, like, they do oh, like, is it the ten, is those tennis courts like those tennis courts <laughs> goes down that road? Straight. Usually yeah. up there, you're gonna be the roundabout and then the path back, yeah. and that's where yeah. it stops. I'll just put mine in front of this, so I know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I think that's all I have. Okay, I will gladly take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, Thank you all. You're welcome.